Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Uh, this week we will be speaking about the prophecy mentioned in Isaiah 24. Um, and uh, we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. And to get started, we'll go ahead and sing our song. And today we are going to be singing, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. So I'll bring that up now. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and study about uh, the prophecy in Isaiah 24 of a global destruction that will be happening uh, before uh, Jesus comes back. Um, so we'll get into that and we'll go ahead and pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you'll bless us and help us today and um, help us to study your word and learn from it. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we'll start reading Isaiah 24, and we'll, we'll read the whole chapter. Uh, it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. So this is going to affect everybody, and uh, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. You're not just, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're just a regular person, if you're a religious leader, uh, if you're a, uh employer or an employee. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Things like that, it's, everyone's going to be affected. This is, you know... Um, doesn't matter how much money you have or anything, every, everyone's going to be affected by this. Um, and then verse 3, it says, The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws 
changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Okay, so this is happening because people have completely turned away from God and decided to do their own thing and live a life of sin. And they haven't, and Christians have not, or so called Christians, people who have uh, done lip service to Christ, saying that they have made a covenant with Him, have broken that covenant. And so God is going to send this destruction. And um, then verse 6 says, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. So this has something to do with a fire. Okay, because they're going to be burned. And this is going to be so bad, this is going to be so horrible, that it says that there will be few men left. Okay. Those 8 billion people in the world. Um, you know, for something, uh, that is global, a global massive natural disaster to kill off billions of people, because it says few men left, so to, to kill off billions of people, you know, that's quite massive. Um, and, uh, we'll continue reading here, uh, and it goes on to talk about how everyone's mourning. It says in verse 7, uh, The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh, the mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth, they shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, every house is shut up, that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation. And the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people. There shall be as a shaking of an olive tree. And as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify you the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. So the few people that are going to be left, these few people, there's few men left, which men there is people, not just males, um, means mankind. So the few people that are left are going to glorify God, and they're going to sing. Um, and, it, and what, you know, the ones that are survival actually commanded you know, wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Okay, from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pear and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the field shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snail. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Okay, so you know this is a global, this is a global massive natural disaster that's about to happen. And uh, verse nineteen says, "The earth is utterly broken down; the earth is clean dissolved; the earth is moved exceedingly." The earth shall will to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be moved like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. So the transgression of the transgression is going to fall and not rise again. This is going to do away with the wicked. This is going to do away with the this evil in our world, um, and and it's not going to the this, the evil that we're seeing today will. You know, there's violence and hatred and and just, you know, all kinds of immorality and evil. This is never going to rise again. It's going to, this is God doing a global reset that is going to, it's kind of like the flood was, but this is a lot more massive. Um, because in the flood, the earth didn't turn upside down at all. There's no record of the earth actually turning upside down. It was just overflowed with water. Um... And, uh, so this one is, is going to be with fire. Um, you know, he's going to destroy the earth with fire. A few people will be left. And it will be like Noah again, where 
the wound will start over with a few people, um, and it's not, it's not going to just be one family. It's going to the my guess. The Bible prophesies, you know, about the hundred forty-four thousand that is uh, sealed. It says, "Do not uh, harm the trees um, and stuff until the hundred forty-four thousand are sealed. Till the servants of God are sealed." It's possible that it's only the 144,000, and that would be both men and women, as I have uh, shown before from Scripture. And then those men and women would repopulate the earth until, and which the millennial kingdom of Christ is not very really far away, even after this. And it shows that in the later on in this chapter. Um, but the millennial reign of Christ could still be upwards to 50 to 100 years away, even after this destruction. Um, at least, at least that long. Um, and, uh, if you go down here, let's see, to verse, uh, 21. Um, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, because they're all evil and wicked. Okay, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners or gathered in the pit. And they shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Um, I'm not sure if that means that they all die and go to hell, but then it says they'll be visited, so you can't get out of hell once you're there. Um, it sounds like, you know, everybody's been preparing for some kind of disaster, and they're, like, making all these little, uh, underground shelters and stuff. Um, and, you know, it's known that governments, you know, they've known for a long time that some kind of disaster is going to happen. They have plans to get the kings and the high ones into government underground bunkers and facilities. Um, and some of them, I've heard of one in Colorado that you can live there for like two years. They've got it to where they can get all the, you know, high fluting people and they can live there for a couple of years. Um, so I'm thinking it may be that they will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit because, you know, they're kind of locked in there. They can't, they're not going to come out for fear uh, because this huge, massive destruction has happened. And then it says, and after many days they shall be visited. So this almost sounds like a super, supernatural visitation where Jesus appeals to them. Um, and I, what happens then, I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't say. It just says that they will be visited. Um, so does that mean that they die? Is Jesus going to show up and kill them? Um, is he going to show up and give them the gospel? And if they don't get saved, they die? I'm not sure. It just says they will be visited. Um, in verse 23, it says, After this, because it says, Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. So, after, so see, this destruction happens before the millennial reign of Christ, and it very well could happen before the rapture even because um, something is happening in the world, in the earth, that can cause this massive destruction. And Jesus hasn't come back yet. Um, you know, I was raised an independent fundamental Baptist and was taught, oh, before anything bad comes on the earth, we're going to be raptured out. Well, you know, I, I, I believe that this will happen before the rapture. Um, I honestly believe that this destruction will happen before the rapture. Um, and I'll get into that more in a little bit later, but with things happening in the world and what God has warned us about 14 years ago, you know, I believe that this destruction will happen before the rapture. The church is not being raptured out of this. Noah was not raptured out of the flood. He obeyed God and survived. You know, now this time we're not building a boat. No one had to build a boat. God didn't say build a boat. It doesn't say build a boat. Um, it says here in Isaiah 24. Let's see. Who's it at? In one of them. Oh, okay. Not in Isaiah. It's in Acts. Um, this prophecy is also in the New Testament. And the Bible does tell us how to escape it. This destruction. There's only one way to escape this destruction. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Your wealth isn't going to save you. It doesn't matter how much education you have. Your smarts isn't going to save you. There's only one way to survive this destruction. Okay? Acts 2, 17-21 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, 
I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So in this context, it's not just that you're saved from your sins and saved from hell. It's being calling upon the name of the Lord, getting saved, believing in Jesus, which includes, you know, you have to repent. You have to totally surrender to Christ. You know, I've preached that all the time. And there's a whole lot of videos on that. At the end of this, a playlist will come up, a feature video playlist. It'll have how to video called How to Get to Heaven, video called Sins a Christian Cannot Do, or something like that. Uh, and then another video called, um, uh, uh, another video about the parable of the sower. Okay, you know, go watch those videos. It tells you how to truly be saved. And if you are truly saved and right with God and serving God, then you will escape this. That's the only way to escape this. You are not going to escape it any other way. I heard some crazy person on YouTube last week saying that this destruction wasn't going to happen for another seven years. Uh, I honestly do not believe that. I think it's going. I think it's extremely intimate. Um, they, they were saying that this destruction wasn't going to happen for another seven years, and that uh, for the next seven years, God was going to really bless His church and bless His people, and that uh, we're all supposed to put back one. It's like the days of Joseph. We're all supposed to put back one fifth of all uh, income for the next seven years because the kingdom that's coming after the destruction, the way to get into it is by our wealth. When I heard that, I was in the going, I cannot believe somebody just preached that. Somebody just preached that the, the wealth is going to save them from God's wrath. No, your wealth, the, God don't care about your money. Jesus said, don't set up, lay up treasures for yourself on earth. I mean, I was like, that is so blatant heresy. You know, some things just surprise me. I don't know why they surprise me, but sometimes I just get surprised. I'm like, Really? I mean, no, nothing about repentance, nothing about believing in Jesus. Just make sure you have a bunch of money and, and, and you'll survive this. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't want your money. He has a cattle on a thousand hills. He don't, he don't need your money. He don't want your money. Well, God doesn't even need us, but he wants us. He wants our souls. He wants our lives. He wants our dedication and surrender and commitment and that is how you survive this you cannot survive this otherwise now some background here i we my brother and i first found out about this 14 years ago right after he got saved and you can go read my brother's testimony and read all about that and the link to that will be in the description under this video as it is under all of our videos um so 14 years ago after my not long after my brother got saved God told us that this destruction of Isaiah 24 would happen in our lifetime, and, and he was saying it was happening soon. Because to God, you know, 14 years is soon. Um, hundred years or a thousand years is a day, so 14 years is like a minute, you know. Um, and uh, he also told us that we would see the destruction, and we would feel, but it would not harm us. Now, I got really upset about this, and I spent years... For a good 10 to 12 years, I mean, I fasted and prayed many times, and I was begging God to send revival instead of destruction, even when I died because of my illness, because of the poison and stuff, and went to heaven, I was begging God to send me back because the people still need me, and the re what I was talking about was this very thing. They need me to teach them the gospel and to help them to get saved so they, you know, the, they uh, escape this destruction or this destruction doesn't come. And, um, I, you know, I spent, I, you know, I have fasted and prayed and fasted and prayed that God would send revival instead of this destruction. And I do honestly believe that I postponed it uh, because of some things that happened with the uh, some of the 
eclipses and stuff that happened and the four blood moons, I believe that it was supposed to happen before and I was able to postpone it through my pills and fasting. But, you know, there's a limit. I mean, there's a time when God just says, okay, enough is enough. And I'm just not going to put up with people no more. You know, and I understood that in the beginning. I understand that now. And, you know, I have witnessed to people and I have prayed and, you know, um, the the country seemed to be getting better for a while, but they it didn't really get any holier. You know, good politics is one thing, but if people aren't going to get any holier, God is still going to destroy it. You can have the perfect political system, but if people aren't going to turn to Christ and become holy, he's still going to send his judgment. You, that Good politics doesn't save us either. Um, you know, and now, you know, now... It's just everything is going really bad. You've got, you know, you got these gay parades and stuff, and they're just mocking Christ. And uh, you've got, you know, churches are now being spied on by the FBI. I mean, welcome to KGB Communist Russia. That's literally what I just received a letter yesterday from the ACOJ saying that the IRS was, not the IRS, the FBI was caught putting undercover agents in churches because they were like, well, these people can become violent extremists because they're against the, they're not with like the culture. And from what I'm gathering from it, it's over the gay thing. Okay, so now you've got government spies sitting in the churches, just like in communist Russia and communist China. Okay, we are losing, I mean, you know, I've passed and prayed, and I've witnessed, and I've talked to people, and you can see how many followers I have. You know, I got a whole 2,000. I don't know how many people actually watch my sermon videos. I think most of them watch the uh, reading through the Bible in a year, which is really great, because God can work with that and and get the, you know, and can work with some. The Word of God is, is the best, uh, you know, it's, it's the seed, and it's it can put that seed in them, and they can get right, uh, you know, um, just by that, just by listening to the Bible. That's why I'm putting it out there because I'm thinking, well, I, at least I can get truth into their ears and maybe they will repent and get saved and do right and they'll escape this destruction. You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time harping on the destruction itself because I don't want people, I, I'm, I don't want people to say a prayer and go back and live the way that they were just because they think it's going to get them out of this destruction because that's not going to work. So I put a lo whole lot of emphasis on true salvation. I don't, I've not preached a whole lot on this destruction or even at all since I've been on YouTube. You know, it's in the uh, testimony, but I haven't made a video about it yet because people need to get saved. People need to turn to Christ because... He's Christ because he's God because he died for them. They need to be truly repentant and they don't need to just say a prayer and hoping that and be like, okay, now I'm fine. Now God's not going to kill me in this destruction. It don't work that way. So that's why I put so much emphasis on the solution more than the threat. I put so much more emphasis on the escape route more than the threat. And I, I don't even tie it in very much. Because people need to see that they are in danger because of their sin, not just because the earth is about to do something crazy. Um, so I haven't spoken on a whole lot, and um, and I just don't. I'm not one of these people who put a lot of emphasis on prophecy because what people people need, they want to hear prophecy, but then they still won't do anything about it. What they need to hear is that they are sinners. They're going to hell, and they and uh, you know, and their souls need to be saved. Because if they truly get saved, then they'll survive the destruction too. I mean, the Holy Spirit will take care of everything else. The number one thing is their souls have got to be saved. And so many of them, even sitting in the church pews, their souls aren't saved. They're going to wake up in hell and wonder how they got there. They're going to wake up. Most of, the, I mean, I think just about every. Uh, so-called Christian that I was raised around is going to wake up in hell someday and wonder how they got there. 
that's what's going to happen to them because they live evil, wicked lives underhandedly, you know, and subtly. But they're not saved. They are. They produce evil food. They don't produce good food. And so, you know, they're going to wake up in hell someday and wonder how they got there. And I don't want that to happen. So I keep just putting a lot of emphasis on true salvation because that fixes everything. Um, but uh, there are some things that, uh, you know, I have fasted and prayed many times over the years, begging God not to send this destruction, to send revival. There's been a few, you know, things that look like revival would start coming up, but then society don't change. We keep getting worse and worse and worse. We keep getting more hateful, more violent, more evil. I mean, it's just a constant fight, and it's like the we, the church is constantly having to push back, and, you know, thank God the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, but it's getting quite ridiculous. You know, we are, we're about to lose our nation. I mean, now we've got spies sitting in churches. We've got government spies sitting in our churches reporting what the pastor is preaching to the federal law enforcement. That's what they do in China. That's what they did in Russia. That is communism. I grew up my whole life. My parents were very strict. We had to learn Bible verses. And I grew up my whole life preparing for this. Because my parents were like, it happened in Russia. It's going to happen here. They're going to take our Bibles away. And we've got you've got to know your Bible. And you've got to have it memorized. Because that's all you're going to have when they take it away. That could honestly be coming at any moment. We've got spies sitting in our churches reporting to the FBI what the pastor is preaching. And if they don't like it, they're going to come in and arrest the pastor. They're going to, I mean, you know, like, you know, my dad's got a lot of problems and he's turned away from God, but there was a time when he was, you know, I think he was like one among the thorns or something. He never truly got saved, but he was seeking. And he was really strict and he taught me this stuff and, you know, he told me one time, he said, the Constitution is just a piece of paper if they don't enforce it. If they don't enforce it, it is just a piece of paper. And it's not. it doesn't take a whole lot to turn this country completely upside down and make us completely communist. It, it doesn't take that much. People's like, oh, it will never happen. Well, it is very possible that God may be doing this destruction to make sure it doesn't happen. You know, that's one thing I have realized is that, you know, in all the times that I was praying that God would not send this destruction, one of the things that came, kept coming back to me a lot was I am doing this, I'm going to do this so that it doesn't get worse. So that it doesn't come to that. He's doing it to protect his few people that are actually truly saved and following him. He's protecting them because he promises the Philadelphian church that he would del- he would keep them from the hour of temptation. That they would not go through, a, you know, a persecution and stuff like that. Um, because if you look at the Philadelphian church age, it's not persecuted. It says they have a little strength, but they have not denied, you know, they have a little strength and they've... Um, and, and they have an open door. So it's promised that the Philadelphian Christians will not be persecuted. Um, so in order to stop us from being persecuted, it looks like he may send this destruction and kill all the wicked to deliver us. Um, and now also, uh, God gave us some details about this destruction a few uh, years ago, uh, 14 years ago when we, he first told us this. He said... That, um, so if you are right with God and stuff, this, uh, and, and you actually survive and you're living through it, um, he warned us not to drink public water, uh, and to stay in our house for three days, during which time it will be dark outside and the out- air outside will be poisonous, um, and God promised us, and I believe he does this for all of the people that he's wanting to save from this, you know, he'll cover our house with a cloud to protect us. Uh, now, three years ago, my family and I bought a house with a well. And God said that we will be able to drink our well water during this destruction because it's the it's not the ash and stuff isn't going to get into the 
water that way. And plus, we've got good filters for our water anyway. Um, and then uh, another thing about this instruction that God said, he said that what would cause the initial cause of this destruction that would set up a chain reaction um, was that Yellowstone would, he told us this 14 years ago, that Yellowstone would blow up. This would set off a chain reaction of other volcanoes erupting, including ones under the sea, which would cause super tsunamis. Now, we live in Tennessee, close to the Georgia state line, and God said that we would see a wall of water uh, coming at us, so it would have to come up from Florida over the state of Georgia, and we would, and being near the Tennessee Georgia line, we would actually see a wall of water in the distance, and we would get scared, but it would end up going down before it got to us. Um, so this, and if you think about, it, you know, God turns the earth upside down, and it says that He's going to scatter the inhabitants of God, He's going to shake, thing, you know, the the foundations of the earth will shake. So he's going to shake up the earth and turn it upside down. I mean, that's going to cause all kinds of tsunamis, volcanoes. This makes sense, okay? Now, God also said that all of these volcanoes erupting and the corresponding earthquakes is what will cause the earth to turn upside down. This is going to, because even the really bad earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan, like, I don't know, five, ten years ago, I think, um, it knocked the earth off its axis and the earth began to, and it actually tilted more. We lost a few milliseconds of time because it actually, um, so the earth has already, uh, been knocked off its axis and is tilting more. So we're already heading towards that, turning upside down. Um, and, uh, now, as I said, Isaiah, uh, 24 also prophesies that this destruction will kill most of the people in the world. It says there's only going to be a few men left. There's 8 billion people in the world. Okay? That means almost 8 billion people are going to die. How many is going to be left? I don't know. The Bible prophesies that God seals 144,000. I don't know if that's the number that's left. I don't know if that's just, if that's or if he's, you know, is that the number of adults and then he's going to leave children too? I don't know, but I mean, that, it says few men. Um, so it's, when when God says few, he means, I mean, even if it leaves a million people, or even if it was to leave a whole billion, I mean, it's going to kill seven billion people? That's a lot of people. Even if it was to leave a billion people. Even if that few, that means, well, okay, it's going to kill off 7 billion people and there's going to be a billion left. Well, that's still 7 billion people dead and in hell, by the way. Because I don't really think that anyone truly saved is going to die in this destruction. That just shows you how many people are truly saved. Um, and, uh, you know, the, God's quite serious. Um, Isaiah 24 prophesies a huge... Uh, global catastrophe like this um, and 14 years ago God came and told us hey this is going to happen in your lifetime um, and uh, you know it's going to kill off most of the people in the world uh, now Isaiah 24 also says that um, people will be burned up so that's an interesting thing because you know a volcano volcanoes erupting you know, all the place well, they're going to be burned up, and there can be, like, radiation burns, and then actual fires, and then, of course, the smoke and ash. I mean, it's, it can be really bad. Um, now, we started warning people about this 14 years ago, and we have been warning people about it. Like I said, it's in my brother's uh, testimony. But we've never had, but everybody has always come against us, and uh, very few, uh, you know, even our own church kicked us out. I've only had one person just the other day. I left this on a comment on someone else's video. And someone commented back that they believed it. That is literally the only person that we've ever had say that they that that they believed us. Um, <laughs> I mean, they just, people are evil. They don't want to get saved. They don't want to be right with God. And so the majority of the people, even our own church, kicked us out. Because they're like, well, Jesus is coming back and the rapture is going to happen and we're not going to go through nothing like that. 
Well, that's not what that's not what it's that's not what um God has told us, and that's not what the Bible says. You can't show me anywhere in the Bible where it says Jesus Christ will come back before the earth is darkened, before the sun is darkened. That that's not in there. It says that Jesus Christ will not come back until the beast sits in the temple and calls himself God. The temple hasn't even been built yet. But yet this destruction could be happening. The temple hasn't even been built yet. Um, so, no, Jesus isn't, uh, the, the rapture his, isn't happening yet. Um, Christians are better, people are better prepared for this destruction. Or be repenting and trying to get the chain to stop. Um, and get God to change his mind because... It's, it's going to happen, you know, we're not being raptured out of here before this happens. Um, now, when God first started telling us about this 14 years ago, very few scientists, and it was mostly, you know, the crazy, crazy fringe ones that believe in aliens and all that stuff, it was those ones that were warning about Yellowstone being a threat. Well, I guess they were actually right about something. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's, you know, it was mostly those fringe, crazy ones that nobody listens to. They're not mainstream. And they were saying, oh, Yellowstone's a threat. It's going to blow up soon. Well, the mainstream scientists were like, no, it's not a threat at all. Uh, about five years ago, about the time that we were kicked out of our church, uh, the scientists began, the mainstream scientists began to acknowledge that Yellowstone was a threat because it was starting to have some activity. Starting to, the magma chamber starting to fill up. Some things were starting to happen. And they were like, well, yeah, it's acting a little bit active. And um, the, it, it could blow up. It's going to blow up definitely sometime. But they were like, well, it's probably going to not happen until like 50,000 years in the future. They saw no imminent threat at all. Um, and so I just kept, you know, I kept praying. I kept waiting. I kept trying to get people to repent. I just kept serving God and being faithful. Now, all of a sudden, uh, last week, um, I saw a documentary on Discovery Plus, and it's actually been on there for, I think it's been on there for a month or two, and I just hadn't had time to watch it yet, because I was in school and working and everything. Um, and, but last week, I watched it, and it was about Yellowstone being a super volcano. And so, I watched that, and... Um, I think it's been out for like a month, about a month or two already. Uh, in that documentary, um, the scientists are now saying that Yellowstone is super active. It is an imminent threat. It could blow up in as little as one month from now. It's now to the point to where when it comes to volcanoes, it's at the unpredictable stage to where, okay, this thing could blow up next month. Or it might blow up, you know, blow up in a million years. Which, the Earth hasn't even been here for a million years, so... Because they're on an evolutionary time scale that doesn't even recognize God. Um, but, you know, they're saying... But they're saying, well, it really could blow up next month. And they're saying, well... Ne and, and they're, like, almost definitely sure it's going to blow up in the next decade. That's like ten years. Um, but, you know, it, it, it could just lay there and... Rumble and just make noise and not do anything really, you know, for another million years is what they'll say. Um, so it is, but you can see how this has progressed since God first told my brother and I about it 14 years ago and we tried to warn our church and we tried to warn people. Um, and as you can tell, our church didn't kick us out immediately. It was more so over a long period of time and they just did not want to believe um, what God had told us and God's word, and they end up kicking us out. Um, and, uh, you know, now Yellowstone is a huge threat. It's like after 14 years, it went from, oh no, they're crazy. It's not going to blow up. It's fine. To, oh my goodness, it could blow up next month. Now, when they said it could blow up next month, that was when they put it on Discovery Plus. That's when they published it or when they did it. That was, at least two months ago. So we're already in that. Like it's now can blow up today. It could blow up tomorrow. It could blow up in the next minute. It is a ticking time bomb. And you know everybody's 
scared death of World War Three and nuclear war because Russia can hit a button and nuke us. Well, guess what? God has a button. God has a button, and whenever God decides to hit that button, Yellowstone is going to blow up, and it's going to destroy billions of people in the world. I believe it will kill at least seven and a half billion people. At the very least, seven and a half billion people are going to die. And I think I, I, I think saying that 500 million people will survive it is still too many. I, I'm really afraid that it's somewhere around not even a million people, maybe half a million people. Will survive this. It is going to be global. It is going to be massive. It's bad. Okay. I have prayed and fasted. And and ask, and even asked God for a life extension. To try to get people to repent. To stop this thing. I haven't been able to stop it. I tried. I mean I warned people and preached it. And nobody wants to listen to me. Um. So this is the last chance. I mean this may be the last chance. You You know. You either repent now or you could get blowed up tomorrow by Yellowstone. That's your choices. You might get blowed up later today by Yellowstone. Um, you know, and the scientists, you know, they don't believe in God and they're evolutionists, so they're just looking at what it could ha what could do, and they are really scared because they're saying that it could blow up and cause an extremely mass destruction. It could immediately kill everyone in seven states, like totally flat in seven states. Immediately. Um, and this could happen anytime now. Um, they are also saying it could end up completely wiping out all life on Earth. Now, these are evolutionists. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe in God. So, they're just looking at, oh my goodness, this is really bad. This could get really bad and it can just kill off everything in the world. Which is true. It probably could on a scientific level. But, we have a Bible and we have a promise of God that there will be... A few men left, and the holy people will be left. God's people will be left, and they have to be holy people. You cannot be living a lie. You cannot be trying to manipulate God. You cannot give God lip service. You have to fully, 100%, dedicate yourself to God and surrender to Him. And if you don't, He is going to kill you in this destruction. It is that serious. It is that imminent. Okay? We do have the promise that those people will survive. It's not going to destroy all life on earth. We do have that problem because God said also promises that he always leaves a remnant. Maybe a small remnant, but it's a remnant. Okay? So we know that God's not going to wipe out the whole earth, but it's going to be bad. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be really bad. Um, so, you know, people just really need to repent because it can happen any second. It can happen, I mean, it's, it's at that point. They can't predict anymore. They said it, you know, the magna chambers are pretty much full. There's two huge magna chambers under Yellowstone. They're both full enough. The ground is actually rising. Um, it is rumbling and smoking and, uh, you know, those, it's getting a lot more active and it could just go. I mean, they had a volcano. Volcanoes are extremely unpredictable. They had a volcano. I think they said it was over, it was in Hawaii, um, and it was on the same documentary, so you can see this, uh, but there was a volcano, I think it was one of them that was in Hawaii, that people actually go, they, they put tourists on there all the time, and they go look at it and stuff, because it's a neat thing to do, to go climb on a volcano, I've always been like, I wouldn't do that, because I'm, I'm afraid of those things, and I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to be on there and it explode. You know, um, but you know, they always monitor it and the scientists constantly watching and stuff to make sure it's safe to put people and they did that that day. It, the, and without warning, well, there was like, there was people on it. There was, and, and, the, and it exploded. It actually had a small, it wasn't a very big one. It was a small eruption that lasted a few minutes, but because there was people on the volcano at the time, like 22 people died. And then others were sent to the hospital with severe burns. I mean, and it just exploded with no warning. There was no warning. It just suddenly awoke and exploded. I mean, volcanoes are extremely unpredictable. You know, they, they can look nice and then, you know, become really active and blow up. Um, that's why the pagan people who don't know God and don't know Jesus... 
they, you know, the pagans said that they were gods and they'd get angry and blow up uh, because it was all unpredictable. But, um, no, the volcano is not a god. Um, it's controlled by God who may get angry and decide to let it blow up. Um, but the volcano itself is not a god. Um, it's just a tool that God uses sometimes. Like, it's, it's like God's own little nuclear bomb or something he decides to set off every once in a while. Um, and, you know, scientifically, you know, people can repent. And this can be turned away from us and this doesn't even have to happen because, like my brother said, well, you know, God could open up uh, caverns under the ground and just let all that magna flow down and cool and we could cool it. I mean, God can stop this. It, you know, it's not out of God's hands. It's out of all hands. We, you know, and it's not truly out of all hands. If enough people would repent and obey God and society actually changed to become holy, we would not have this destruction. He is going to do this destruction because it's as in the days of Noah where people are so wicked and so vile that even the earth itself cannot stand the sin anymore. So the earth is going to throw him out. The earth is going to get rid of him. The, the Bible says that the earth groans because of sin and stuff. And um, and the earth will actually cast out evil people. People will die. Uh, and so, you know, it's, the sin is so bad the God's got to do something before we destroy ourselves. Uh, because these nuclear wars could have the same... I mean, nuclear wars could end up killing off everybody in the world. We have a promise that that's, that there's not ever going to be a total human annihilation from anything like that. So God has to do things to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, but, you know, God started warning us about Yellowstone and this destruction 14 years ago. When God started warning us about it, he said, uh, you know, the the scientists were saying it, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't a threat at all. Fourteen years later, scientists are saying it can happen any minute and there is no plan. And the government has no plan in place to save all the people. Where are we going to, how are we going to get people out? How are we going to save these people? There's no, there, and they're just sitting back helpless and hopefully saying there's nothing we can do. And they're, and they're scrambling trying to say, well, uh, we can uh, try to get an evacuation plan. But, I mean, it's so late in the game. And then they're like, well, NASA's got an idea that they may be able to pump a bunch of water down there and cool it. But even um, even someone uh, put on YouTube that it would take so many years to do that. I mean, there is not, there's not a scientific way for us to stop this. The only way that we can stop this is enough people have to get right with God. Enough people have to repent. They have to truly change. It cannot, you can't just say a prayer and go on. That's what's going to cause this destruction. It's people saying a prayer and asking for forgiveness and then just going on and being wicked. You have to change. If you don't change, this destruction is going to kill you. It will happen and it will kill you. Now, if you get right with God and you make sure you're a holy person and you're following Jesus and you're obeying him and as much as and you're trying your best and you're not making excuses for your sins and you're truly seeking him and trying, then, you know, and you're totally surrendered and dedicated to him, then you'll survive it. It may still happen, but he's going to cover you and you will survive it. Um, so... That is the message today, and, you know, if you're not saved, if you know, go watch the videos, How to Get to Heaven, Sins a Saved Person Cannot Do, The Parable of the Soul. Go watch those videos. Do what they say. Repent. You have got to repent. You have got to completely, 100%, give your life to Christ and obey Him, and your heart has to change, and you have to give Christ your heart, you know, You've got to you've got to stop your sin because there are sins that a Christian cannot do. A truly saved person cannot steal, cannot commit murder, cannot falsely accuse someone. A true Christian can't do those things. If you're doing those things, you've never been truly saved. You may have said a prayer, but that didn't save you. Go watch those videos and learn how to truly be saved and you know, um warn others that this destruction is coming 
and try to get them saved and get them right with God. They may laugh at you. They may throw you out of the, your church. They may throw you away from the company. They may send people to try to kill you. They may try to get you fired from your job. I mean, we've experienced all of that, okay? We are still under... Every day my brother goes to work, he puts his life on the line. He was just almost kidnapped again about two months ago. I mean, we have been persecuted a lot, and this is one of the reasons, um, because we are true Christians, and we preach holiness, and we're saying people are going to die and go to hell, and this destruction is coming, and uh, they don't want to listen, but it's going to happen. It can happen any minute. It is imminent. They can't predict volcanoes any better. I mean, the magma chambers are full. The pressure is building. When's it going to blow? And when it blows, that's that's the end. I mean, you know, billions of people are going to die. And then, um, you know, I don't know how long after that it will be before Christ comes back. But this is this is like the flood, but this time it's fire. It's, it's the same kind of thing. And it, there's going to be a lot more people left than just one family. It's, 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 I believe there will be at least 144,000 because the Bible prophesies 144,000 being sealed uh, with the Holy Ghost so that they're not um, touched by destruction, by God's wrath. Um, so I believe that there will be at least 144,000. Like I said, a, a we found that that can be both men and women because there was says that the 144,000 are not defiled with women. It actually says in the Strongs that that one defiled is figurative, and the and that um it is figurative, and it so is meaning like doctor false doctrine and stuff. It's not a physical uh defiling, so it's not so it can be both men and women of, of the 144,000. Um, and, but it doesn't have to just be the 144,000. You're not condemned to die in this just because you're not one of the 144,000. You too, it's just that he's going to actively, you know, leave 144,000, uh, sell 144,000. Uh, but you can, there can be more than that left. You can be left too if you, you can survive it too if you simply turn and obey God. Um, and, uh, so, everyone can survive this. It doesn't even have to happen, but the secret is you have to repent. You have to actually repent, and to learn how to do that, please go watch the video, How to Get to Heaven, and Sins a Christian Cannot Do, and the one on the parable of the soul, it will be in the featured playlist that will come up at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching today, and I pray that, you know, if you're listening, you'll repent, you'll seek God, like, totally dedicate yourself to Him, totally surrender to Him, say, you know, give Him everything. This is imminent, okay? It's not a joke, it's not a game. The scientists, you know, like I said, 14 years ago, God told us this, there was nothing scientific to back it up. 14 years later today, they're saying Yellowstone is a ticking time bomb, it can go off. It can now go off any minute. I mean, it's it's here. Um, it's just whenever God decides to hit his nuke button, then you know if there, if someone's not anyone who is not totally surrendered to God is going to die. That's that's what the Bible teaches, and uh, so I really hope and pray that you will make sure you're right with God and you repent of anything you need to repent of, fully give your life to God. And obey him in all things. Um, and we'll go ahead and uh, close in prayer. And then I will do the Aaronic blessing over you in Hebrew. And then in English as found in the Bible. In number 6, 24 through 26. Um, dear Heavenly Father God. Thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. I pray that you will be with the people listening. And help them to repent. And help them make sure that they're right with you. So at least they will survive this destruction. But I pray that somehow a revival will break out. And this destruction will not even come. And I thank you for your mercy, and I pray that you will um, get a hold of people's hearts and help them to repent. And I pray that your perfect will be done in all things. In Christ Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, I'll go ahead and say the blessing over you in Hebrew and then in English. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And thank you so much for watching this week. Uh, please come back next week and watch another one. Um, if we're all still here. If, you know, the destruction hasn't happened yet. Um, I'll keep putting stuff out. Um, and, you know, just uh, repent uh, to survive that. And like I said, we don't know when it's going to happen. It can happen now. But it may sit there for 100 years, you know, 10, 20, 30 uh, years or something before it goes off, but the point is it can happen right now. It's just whenever God wants to do the science is there, you know, it can blow up right now. Um, and you know, uh, thank you for watching. Please share the video and like it and, uh, you know, leave comments and stuff and that all helps our channel. Thank you to everyone who does all that and thank you for everyone that supports our ministry. And if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, uh, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. And thank you so much for watching and God bless you. And um, uh, yeah, join us next week for another uh, lesson. And thank you. Bye.